Good evening, I'm Sarah Sapsanama. Let's begin with the headlines of the hour. Questions raised on government mechanism after District Attorney's Office excludes Home Minister from the list of defendants in cooperative fraud case. Victims take it to the streets. Sudur Pashtim Chief rejects the claim by both candidates of Nagarik Unmukti Party for the post of Chief Minister. Calls for candidates once again. Congress warns of taking it to the court. Indians to begin choosing a new parliament for the next five years on April 19th as Prime Minister Narendra Modi seeks a third consecutive term. And the 14th President Running Shield kicks off from today. Eight gold medals awarded on the first day. Ganesh Bika makes a record in high jump. The Office of the Government Attorney Rupandehi has filed a case at the District Court citing embezzlement of 1 billion 310 million rupees of almost 10,000 depositors of Supreme Cooperative. The accusation paper presented at the court states that over 130 million rupees was transferred in the name of Gorkha Media Network Private Limited. It also states that 20 million rupees was transferred in the name of Minister for Home Affairs Ravi Lamichani, who was then Managing Director of Gorkha Media. The report states that the Home Minister had acquired the amount without fulfilling the required procedures. Legal experts say that this was adequate proof to file a case against him. However, they have condemned the government for failing to do so. The Home Minister held a press meet in the Nepali month of Mark last year following reports of the amount being deposited in his bank account and he clarified that he had not received the amount. However, investigations have revealed that the Minister and Gorkha Media had acquired the amount. Prime Minister Pushma Kamal Dahal, CPNML Chair KP Sharma Oli and Heads of Police have maintained that Lamichani was innocent. Based on the investigation, Gorkha Media's GB Rai and his group has embezzled around 1 billion rupees of seven cooperatives across the country. The scenario has also raised moral questions on Home Minister Lamichani holding on to his post. Although the involvement of Home Minister Ravi Lamichani in Rupandehi's Supreme Cooperative's fraud case was revealed by police investigation, he has not been included in the list of defendants or interrogated. Twenty alleged individuals, including the main accused, have yet to be brought under jurisdiction. Meanwhile, the victims of the cooperatives have resorted to protests, citing the government had given impunity to the perpetrators. Victims in Bhairahua and Butol have staged protests after they could not receive their hard-earned savings, which they had deposited at the cooperative. The cooperative has embezzled depositors' money by lending it to non-members. A dozen other cooperatives, including Kalpa Riksha, Shiva Shikhar, Agantuk, Sarthak and Star, have been accused of financial irregularities. Victims of these cooperatives have also joined the protest. Based on the logbooks of 1,828 depositors who have filed complaints, the cooperative has embezzled 1 billion 20 million rupees of depositors' money. Based on this, fines have been claimed along with punishments. However, the cooperative has more than 8,000 shareholders. Embezzlement of a much larger amount can be revealed from the share certificates. Cooperatives provide loan to non-members without security. However, the entity has remained silent for years. Although late, the case has been registered at the court, which has given the victims a hope for justice. Main opposition Nepali Congress has said Home Minister Ravi Lamichani should resign to help the judiciary with its treatment of the cooperative's fraud case. The party has said resignation was the best option for the Home Minister after his involvement was revealed by an investigation into the mishandling of the depositors' money by Butwal's Supreme Cooperatives. Leaders of the party say the Home Minister should now support the judicial process. Meanwhile, the largest party at the parliament, CPN Yemal, has said the Home Minister should get to present his opinion on the allegations before anyone can reach a conclusion. Nepali Congress has been demanding for a parliamentary committee to probe into the alleged involvement of the minister in the cooperative's fraud case and has been obstructing the House session. Ruling CPN Yemal and Maui Centre have been rejecting the demands. CPN Unified Socialists has submitted a letter to Sudur Pashchim Province Governor clarifying it does not support Nagarik Unmukti Party's Province Assembly Member Lakshman Kishore Chaudhary for the post of Chief Minister. The party's provincial party leader, 
Dilva Sodhari presented the letter to the province governor earlier today. Prior to this, while staking his claim for the post of province chief minister, Chaudhary had said that he was backed by his party, along with Nepali Congress and CPN Unified Socialists. Unified Socialists had lent its support to Nagarik Unmukti's Lakshman Kishore Chaudhary from Resham Chaudhary's faction to form the province government with Nepali Congress, saying that the agreement of allocating the chief minister post to the party as per the power-sharing deal was not implemented. Kailash Chaudhary of Nagarik Unmukti's Ranjita Chaudhary's faction has also staked his claim for the chief ministerial post after Sudur Pashim province governor once again called the candidates to stake their claims. Loktantrik Samajwadi Party has exited the government of Madhesh province. Minister for Forest and Environment Ramesh Prasad Kurmi has submitted their resignation. Chief Minister Saroj Kumar Yadav was scheduled to take the floor test today for the fourth time. However, Janamat Party and Nepali Congress obstructed the provincial assembly meeting as soon as it began, saying that the government had not heard the case of the then Education Minister and Leader Mahesh Yadav being attacked in Rajbiraz in the presence of the Chief Minister. The situation in the provincial assembly seemed tense as UML member protested against Janamat's obstruction and Nepali Congress supported Janamat. Members from Janamat and Nepali Congress encircled the rostrum, eventually leading to Speaker Ramchandar Mandal pushing the session by 10 minutes. Chief Minister Yadav wants to take the floor test for the fourth time as Nepali Congress withdrew its support to the provincial government. The alliance between Janata Samajwadi, CPN UML, Maui Center, CPN Unified Socialist and Loktandrik Samajwadi have a clear majority in the province. Madhesh province has 107 provincial members and the chief minister needs at least 54 votes to sustain a government. One of the members, however, has been absconding. Nepali Congress and Janamat are the opposition in the province. The meeting of the International Relations Committee scheduled for today was postponed due to lack of quorum, even as it was to dwell on the Russia-Ukraine war and Nepalese that have been facing difficulty amid the Israel-Iran conflict in the presence of Minister for Foreign Affairs. Minister for Foreign Affairs Naren Gaji Shrestha had reached the meeting on time at 10 a.m. However, members of the committee did not show up even after 15 minutes. The minister then left the meeting with the permission of the committee secretary, Raj Kishore Yadav. The meeting was then adjourned due to lack of quorum. However, this is not the first of such instances. Parliamentary committee meetings have been adjourned on numerous occasions in the past for the same reason. Critics say these instances highlight on the lack of accountability on the part of the parliamentarians. It is now time for our segment Public Pulse where you text us with your opinion. Public Pulse. But before today's question, let's take a look at the results from yesterday's poll. Yesterday we asked you, why do you think there have been frequent street protests? 21% voted for option A, effort to seek rights, 29% for B, weak service delivery, and 50% for C, motivated by vested interests. And here's today's question. What's your take on the meeting of the Parliamentary Committee being pushed due to lack of quorum? Your options are A, heights of negligence, B, not understanding the sensitivity of the issue, and C, problems in scheduling. The voting is on. Type NEWS, select your option A, B or C and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. Now, in our public voice segment, today we've asked in several provinces what problems have they faced while trying to avail health insurance services. Let's take a look at what they had to say. Bimale poisa na aldi ta keri pani vana monti o upsar no hune samasya pani sa bima ko poisa chaina aile vani kura erun garson. Aile eta line boss vanta aile uta line boss vanta subida khasai chaina. So bima bo hai na line ke line token le ra ati subje ra uta pati jata hune thau ma jun subida hai na ati hune ekdom kam sa. Online isma aile nee. Dataru, <laughs> 
प्राप्त न भएर बाहिर लिनु पर्ने भन्ने खालको कुरा गर्ने ले चाहिँ अलि समस्या पारेको जस्तो देखियो समयमा औषधि वितरण नगर्ने स्वास्थ्य बीमाबाट उ गरेकोलाई चाहिँ अलि आनागानी गर्ने त्यस्तो समस्या पनि छ त्यही हुनु पर्ने उपचार पनि उले अनेक जने के रे बहाना बनाएर बाहिर पठाउने भन्या बेला उपचार नगर्नु 3500 रुपैयाँ तिरिरा छ तर अब औषधि किन्न जानु परेको छ औषधि छैन अनि अब अरु टेस्टहरु गर्न जाँदा खेरि अब त्यो टेस्टमा फेरि अब शुल्क लाग्ने रहेछ औषधि चाहिँ पाउँदैन अनि त्यहाँ हाम्रो चाहिँ कुरा कुनै कुराको सुनाइ पनि हुँदैन स्वास्थ्य बीमा भन्दा बित्तिकै अलिकति अब कर्मचारीहरूले इग्नोर गर्ने तिनवटा डाक्टर साहेबले लेख्नु भएको छ औषधि जसमा एउटा पायो दुईवटा पाइएन आठको सात बजे खुल्छ त्यो आठ बजे खोल्ने हेर्नुहोस् अरू एक घन्टा त्यसमा पनि हाम्रो कम गर्दै आएको छ यो हुँदा नि मात्रै यो झ्याउ मान्यो कार्ड लिएर जाँदाखेरि अस्पताल यसरी तब ट्रिट गर्छ कि लाग्यो कि त्यो देशको मान्छे नागरिकै होइन यो कार्डको कुनै भ्यालु नै छैन कहिले डाक्टर हुन्न कहिले औषधि प्राप्त हुन सकिन्न बड़ा झनझटी लगे कि दवाई चाहिए जो अब दिन पर्ने एक महीना को दिन पर्ने ठाक दस दिन को पाई रहे On 19th of April, Indians will begin choosing a new parliament for the next five years as Prime Minister Narendra Modi seeks a third consecutive term. Opinion polls put his Bharatiya Janata Party (BJP) and its allies ahead. They are up against the Indian National Developmental Inclusive Alliance (India), which groups more than two dozen opposition parties, including Congress, which was dominant for decades until the BJP took office in 2014. To rule a party or a coalition needs a simple majority of 272 seats of the total 543 in Lok Sabha. Prime Minister Narendra Modi's Bharatiya Janata Party (BJP) won 303 seats the last time, followed by 52 for the main opposition, Indian National Congress (INC). The elections will be conducted in seven phases, partly to ensure sufficient security at polling booths across the vast country. Votes will be counted on June 4th after polling is done on April 19th, 26th, May 7th, 13th, 20th and 25th and June 1st. Voters can make their choice by pressing a button on an electronic voting machine first used in India in 1982 and more widely since the early 2000s. For the first time the election commission has said elderly and disabled people can vote from home by postal ballot. With 1.4 billion people, India is the world's most populous country. A total of 969 million voters are registered, out of which 497 million are men and 471 million are women. Nearly 1.5 million polling booths have been set up across the country, with the Chief Election Commissioner Rajiv Kumar vowing to take democracy to every corner of the country. It is time now for the sports update. Sports news. The 14th edition of President Running Shield has kicked off from today with President Ram Chandra Podil inaugurating the event. Athletics events began from early morning. On the first day today, Gandaki's Ganesh Bika made a record in high jump. Other events including volleyball and kabaddi also began from today. Eight events under athletics were held this morning. Madesh's Adesh Kumar Yadav won gold in the men's athletics, Bagmati's Prabin Rana Magar won silver and Chandra Bohora bronze. In athletics female Sudhir Pashim's Ritu Joshi backed gold. In 400 meters race Rohit Kumar won gold in men's category and Sarita Khadka in the women's category. Gandaki's Ganesh Bika made a record high jump of 1.81 meters. Sudhir Pashim's Susmita Chaudhary won gold in women's high jump. Badal Karki won gold in the 1500 meters race in men's category and Kalpana Budha in women's category. Badal completed the distance in 4 minutes 19 seconds and Kalpana in 5 minutes 44 seconds. 686 athletes from across the country are participating in the tournament which is being organized with a budget of 15 million rupees. Other 66 gold medals are up for grabs and the first, second and third place will be awarded with cash prize according to the National Sports Council. Team champions, runners up, runners up, and third place team will also be awarded. Other events to be held are karate, taekwondo, and wushu. The event ends on Thursday. Now, Qatar has registered its second consecutive win at the ACC Premier Cup, while Bahrain has defeated Cambodia. Qatar defeated Saudi Arabia by 15 runs in the match held in Oman's Al Emirat Cricket Ground. 
Saudi Arabia elected to field first and Qatar posted 153 runs in the stipulated 20 overs, losing nine wickets. Middle order batsman Mohammad Tanvir contributed 43 runs and Shahzad Jamil 38. Istiyak Ahmed, Usman Khalid and Usman Najib claimed two wickets each for Saudi Arabia. Atif Ur Rahman took one wicket. Chasing a victory target of 154 runs, Saudi were limited to 138, losing eight wickets. Waji Al Hassan was the highest run scorer with 57 runs, followed by Hisham Sheikh with 20. Kashif Abbas added 17 runs and Zain Ul Abidin 16. Gayan Munawira, Musawar Shah and Himansu Rathod each claimed two wickets to ensure Qatar's win. With the win, Qatar have four points and have kept their hopes of reaching the semi-finals alive. In another match held today, Bahrain defeated Cambodia by seven wickets. In the Group B match, Cambodia elected to bat first and went all out for 83 runs in 17.2 overs. Lakman Bhatt was the highest run scorer for Cambodia with 21. Sharman Godara added 17, Shalvin Stanley 15 and Etienne Buicks 10. Ali Dawood and Haider Bhatt each claimed three wickets, Abdul Majid took two wickets and Safiya Virapathiran and Safraz Ali claimed one wicket each. In reply, Safraz Ali scored 23 runs for Bahrain, Imran Ali 8 and Umer Tour 10. Skipper Haider Bhatt remained unbeaten at 39 runs and Ahmer bin Nasir at 3 as Bahrain scored 87 runs in 13.1 overs. Utkarsh Jain claimed two wickets for Cambodia and Ram Sharan won. Four matches have been scheduled for tomorrow in the ACC Premier Cup. The match between Hong Kong and Malaysia is to be decisive in determining the semi-final equation. Cambodia will play against UAE while Oman will take on Kuwait. That is all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Good night.